expectations are high now. <laughs> it's Monday, September 16th, 2024. Welcome to the show, everybody. <laughs> The bass, the bass was a little strong in the music yeah. when we came out. We need to adjust the mix there. Really? I didn't even hear the I music. I thought I was back in high school. Yeah. Was the, was the bass so loud that I couldn't hear it? Do you know what we did in high school? Yeah. So we, in, in Tampa, well, out in uh, Brandon Valrico area, the outskirts of Tampa. There'd be, yes, thank you. Um, there'd be a long row, a long hallway that had windows, and the cool guys would sit there and hit the window and like boom, 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 boom. That was back when the cars were had the, all those, the bass in the cars, oh, remember yeah. that? In the did, 80s. Did you have a car that was like lit up underneath? You remember that <laughs> when the cars no, lit we, up underneath? We didn't, we didn't do that. Oh. We didn't do that. Oh, well, then you weren't from New did Jersey. Did you cruise, <laughs> did you guys cruise McDonald's? We cruised the Marlton 8. The Marlton 8. What is yeah. that, like a little strip mall? It was, it was a movie, movie theater. Movie theater, oh. Yeah. But it was attached to a strip mall because, again, right. we were in New Jersey, so yeah. yes. We would hang out at McDonald's in wow. the parking lot. Incredible. Isn't that weird? Not really. <laughs> I mean, this was... You know, Suburbia. I, here's what I feel. Suburbia. I, I feel bad for kids nowadays. Because now it's all on a phone. Yeah. You guys don't know the joy of getting all dressed up. The excitement. To do absolutely nothing. Because there was hope. There was hope. There was hope. That somewhere on the other side of that McDonald's There would be lot, another I Rock Z. Yes. With a group of guys. A group of girls. Looking for a group of girls. Yes. And then so there'd be this connection. Groups, yeah. How about when someone from another high school came? Oh. oh. Because yeah. you get to know the population of your school. You get to know who they are, the yes. girls, the, the lineup. Yes. Right? Sure do. And every now and then there'd be a different girl. I'm like, who is that? <laughs> so exotic. Rare. <laughs> Amazing! I love. Yeah, I do. I do wish that our our the kids these days can just put down that Google machine, <laughs> that whatever that what is that called? The phone. Yes, the phone. And put it away, and just go out and cruise McDonald's. Get to know. Get to know each other. Get to know each other. Well, sometimes it, it sometimes it was quite terrible. Yeah. You know, sometimes. A, a, a warring faction. I remember, okay, uh, all right, I wasn't gonna go here. Let's go. Wow, this is so weird Let's go. how this is turning. Let's go. Okay, so there was, I'm not gonna name names. Name them. But I am not gonna name them. <laughs> there was a guy at my high school. Rocco De Gregio. <laughs> <laughs> you know you there was no a Rocco. idea how close you got. <laughs> school. He was a tough guy on the football team. Oh, yeah, football and players. And he was like one of the star athletes and super popular. And he got into a fist fight with a group of guys from a rival school. And it was rival football team. Vito and Giuseppe from the other school. Uh, I'm not getting, I'm not naming names. Anyway, uh, so our guy beat up this group of other guys. Okay. Single-handed. Got it. Okay. The following week, we are playing their school. It's an away game. Oh, no. And everybody in the stands has a sign because they are coming to kill this guy. I'm just going to give you a random number. Yes. Number 10. Let's call him number 10. That's not the number. But to protect the innocent, <laughs> let's call him number 10. Well, number 10 was his home number but for the away games yeah, they different. had different numbers <laughs> so they were kill they were coming to kill number 10 and number 10 was the most the kicker <laughs> the most the, the, if, if, the, if we oh. could call him the, the weakest link uh, Fre we'll call him fredo we'll call him for, fredo. The, for these fredo. arguments only we'll call yeah, him fredo. fredo the tiniest the yeah. littlest <laughs> And you could see him trembling oh, on the bench. Those are the good old days. <laughs> the good old days. The 80s. Hey. 
Speaking of football, speaking of football, my Tampa Bay Buccaneers went into Detroit Ford Stadium and beat the Lions this weekend. They beat the Lions. Baker Mayfield. My let poor me tell you, father, that's I know, all I have I'm to sorry. say. I'm sorry. Baker Mayfield, he was baking this weekend. He was baking <laughs> cakes. and Not only did he throw a touchdown pass, the defense on Detroit is nasty. They've got this kid from Michigan, Aiden Hutchinson. Well, they think you're nasty, too. Yes. <laughs> anyway, he, he, he had to go for a first down, and he, ran, he was almost tackled. He ran for a first down, little Baker baked. And then he went in for a touchdown, like on that the, the, on that drive. To it was like it was the winning score. Um, they won 23 to 19, I believe the score was. Um, but the Buccaneers are two and zero. The Buccaneers are two and zero. And you know what? It's hard to it's hard to win in that stadium. It's so loud. It's a dome. Mm. It's so loud. And they do this little tricky thing. They do this little tricky thing. When our team is in the huddle, they turn up the music. In the stadium. Don't you know, pump it up. up. You yeah. got to pump it up. Yes. Don't you know, pump it yeah. up. And then you when they're and then when they're, they're when they're in the huddle, it's very quiet. It's very very quiet. Mm -hmm. Home field advantage. Anyway, Just congratulations like to my Buccaneers. Oh. Yes. <laughs> and the Giants, the Giants, the Giants lost in the last second. I'm sorry, New York Giants. And the Jets won. <laughs> Jets won. Yeah. As usual, an emotional roller coaster in New York. Um, so uh, the Emmys were last. Mm. The Emmys. Didn't watch. I didn't watch, and you know why I didn't watch. Why? I had an emergency dental procedure. Oh yes. Last night, with my beloved Dr. Loewenberg, who let me tell you something. At Doctors point, don't usually work on Sundays. No, no, no. At this point. I believe I am injuring my own mouth just so I can see it because I have <laughs> such a crush on my dentist. He warned me. He warned me not to do something. Because you had I, some. You had some. I. I had. I had. A cap. I had like I had an emergency Temporary. like temporary cap put on uh -huh. my tooth because I. This happened back in July. I bit into a cherry pie. So simple and innocent. And cracked it. And I cracked my tooth. I thought that I had broken my tooth, but I spit out just a pit and I went about my business and mm. everything was fine. When I went for my usual tooth cleaning, they were like, your tooth is broken. Ah. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. I knew I broke my tooth, but it didn't look bro broken. It right. just looked broken to experts that could see it. Yeah. Anyway, so temporary cap. Long story short, I needed to have it reset. Because it came out. Well, he told me not to floss, and I... Flossed. I flossed. I, I, I'm a human yeah. being. I can't not floss. And I remember you were driving down to see your folks, and it had come out, and I was like, this is... I said, you should leave it out for a while. It's kind of cool. <laughs> on, the, on the side. It popped... Like, I was just sitting there, and it, I was like... Whoop. It was, it was as if, like, imagine if you're not chewing gum and suddenly a piece of gum yeah, appears in your Yeah, I know that mouth. feeling. I was like... I know that feeling. I've had that happen. I was like, what, what is this? Yeah, I've had I was that like, happen. is this my tooth? This is the first stage of when you know it's time to hang it up. Put away your dance shoes. Did you, did you develop a little wishel when you talked? No, I was, I, I was kind of into that. I was like, maybe when she comes home, she'll have a little wishel. No. I texted it could him. be hot, right? A little, a little wish on. Hey there, honey. Hey there, sh sweetie pie. Shree, shree pie. <laughs> but he, he fixed it last night. He fixed it last oh, night. Oh, well, you're a saint, Dr. He's Lohenberg. a saint and an angel. Dr. Lohenberg. He said I cannot. He said he could not have me going on television. That Even though I put, he said, he said, you should be able to push it back into place. And I did like, like a little puzzle piece. It went right back into place. Yeah. He goes, but what if it, falls it out. loosens and falls out on TV? Yeah. He goes, I cannot have a person that has professed their love for me <laughs> on television missing any anything. Yeah. I did a whole episode of Riverdale with my front tooth that oh, fell out on the way to yeah, flying remember. to Vancouver. I'm just sitting there chewing gum all of a sudden. It, it, same thing. I had uh, a, a thing for my tooth and it slipped out. And so I, I, <laughs> I, 
right. Those pictures are crazy. Those right? pictures are Those my pictures favorite. Are crazy. They're my favorite pictures of Mark. Because you can't. Because he's so handsome, and then you're like, mm, is he? Is he? <laughs> You totally know what I'm saying. You look at your husbands, your spouses, your partners, and you're like, he's so handsome, and then you're like, is he? Is he really? Um, <laughs> yeah, and I, and I couldn't help but, I wore it loud and proud for, like, remember we went out to dinner? I went out to dinner. We you went, went out, out to, to dinner, dinner without it. And he'd be smiling, and I'm like, you gotta stop. <laughs> I didn't care. I didn't care. I, but you can't help but make a stupid face, and I'd go. <laughs> with a, He's like, he's like, What's easy to chew? <laughs> to the waitress at the restaurant. What's easy to chew? And flash her his, you know. Gum. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Emmys. Yeah, the Emmys, right. Oh, is that what we were yeah, talking yeah, yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, the Emmys. I don't know what I was going to say. Emmys. Oh, big wins. Big mm, wins. There. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Shogun, huge, huge. Um, uh, the Bear, huge. Yes. Hacks, huge. Hacks. Billy Crudup from Billy the Crudup. Morning Show. Billy Crudup from the Morning Show. Fantastic. I think for my, and I estimate he's one of the best out there. He's so good. At every Certainly scene. one of the best actors yeah, of yeah, our for generation. Sure. For, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So a lot of big, big wins. Um, congratulations to all the winners. Uh, I would have named you all. Somehow we went off on a rant about my teeth, and I, I don't know. But we also talked about the there. Marlton 8 and McDonald's parking lot, and we, we did all that as well. Yeah. Um, hey, it's gonna be it's gonna be okay weather this week. A little rain Wednesday and Thursday. Um, in the 70s, or so it's That's still hurricane not, leftover. Yeah, no, yes. yeah, leftover from the hurricane. And get this, in California. They're going to have the earliest snow advisory in nearly 20 years that could bring up, uh, bring a month's worth of rain. It's sn wow. going to snow in the Sierras. Wow. Up to yeah. four inches of snow could fall tonight and Monday. Wow. It's going to be a good ski season, guys. It could be. Yeah. It could Incredible. be a good La, 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 La Nina or La, El Nino or La, yo, yo Mama. I don't know. <laughs> It's so funny, the two of you were just talking in stereo. You were going, it was like an echo of what you were saying. El Nino, El Nino, La Nina, La Nina. <laughs> Who knows? I never know. I start reading, I get bored. Um, we've got a huge show today. David Muir is here. He's going to give us... Give us the updates on uh, everything that's unfolding. There was another uh, assassination attempt on former President Trump, um, and it, the, the, it's, it seems like this story is evolving it's like evolving. minute to okay. minute. So we're going to get like the latest yeah. up to date yeah. on that. Also, my buddy Wilmer Valderrama is here. <laughs> Speaking of your mama, get a show on MTV called Your Mama. And we begin our annual Record Breaker Week. Now, did you know, did you know, mm. good viewers, that over the years, we've attempted 90 records on this here show. Wow. It seems like we've attempted 90 last year, but apparently <laughs> it's just in the totality of us doing this. 60 were broken on yeah. the air. <laughs> but wait, there's more. 20 of those records still stand. Wow. Oh. Fun tidbit. We also started doing these segments 25 years ago, and this is the 2025 edition of the Guinness World Record Book. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, 25 years. That's when you guys started doing it. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Were you here for the first one? I, I'm sure I was, because it seems like <laughs> I've been doing it for much longer than that. <laughs> Today, going for another uh, record. This is the most balloons burst with <laughs> box. The most balloons burst with boxing gloves in one minute. The number to beat is 327 wow. balloons. Wow. Yeah, they could pop. 
Gelman said they could pop at any moment, so don't be alarmed. Yeah, yeah but I want protective ear. You have I'm... them right there. Kat. Oh, oh, these are. Oh, <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. You want them Should on I now? Should I put them on now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why do you wear these throughout the show? <laughs> Let's see. Let me see how this how this plays out. Oh, that's cool. Oh. Yeah. 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 It's like giving myself a weird reverse facelift. <laughs> Pulling everything down. <laughs> All right, everyone. <laughs> Am I shouting? Yes, you're shouting. It's time to play Stump Hard. <laughs> All right. Let's say hello to Julie Stutz from Fate, Texas, who watches the show on KDFW. She says she wants to stump me because she just needs that mug and T-shirt like nothing else. Mm. All right, good morning, Julie. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Hey, Julie, you've been to our studio. I have. I was there back in December. It was wonderful, and you guys were so nice. Everyone was so nice. It was it was a great time. It, I've watched the show since 1990, so it was a goal of mine to get there. I was in New York for 48 hours and uh, watched the show and also a taping, so I got to see two times. Amazing. Oh, How did I do that day? Did I? Oh, wait, did did I? Did he stump? Did I the stump anybody? Caller? Um, you did stump, I believe, both the trivia caller and then also on the tape show I was there for. So you oh. stumped them both. Oh, fa ooh, okay. <laughs> All right, Julie, you know how this game works. You're giving us two statements. One is true, one is false. I have 60 seconds to figure out which statement is true. If you stump me, you win this. Oh. And that. Yeah. All right, here's Julie's statements. All of my siblings and parents were born in different states. Mm. Or all of my five children were born in Texas. <laughs> okay. Um, when, when you guys are in Texas, do you guys ever, like, at a restaurant say, the stars are bright, da 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 night? Do you ever do that? I I can't say in a restaurant, but I might have said that out at night looking at the stars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so um, how long have you lived in Texas? Um, I've lived in Texas since 1979. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Um, so how many siblings do you have? I have three sisters. And where, what states were you born? Um, I was born in Alaska. Uh, the next one older than me was born in Missouri. The next one was born in Colorado, and the oldest was born in Texas. And then, and then your parents, where were they born? My father was born in Illinois, and my mother in Arkansas. Okay. Were you in the witness protection program? <laughs> <laughs> no, we were not. <laughs> Um, it's a reasonable question. Five kids. <laughs> five kids. She said she was there since 1970? 79. Um, all right. I'm going to go with all your siblings and parents were born in different states. You're right. Oh. Me. Okay. Well, listen. <clears throat> uh, Julie, I'm sorry. You didn't win the mug, but I tell you what, if you come back, I'll sign a mug for you, okay? If you come back to the show. All right. All right. That sounds wonderful. But you still have a chance to win a valuable trip. It's time for Great Getaways Travel Trivia. Yeah. Jersey girl, if ever I saw one, Shirley Bellman just turned 80 on Friday. Happy birthday.
Hi, Shirley. Thank you. Great job. All right, Deja, spin that wheel and see if we can't win Julia Pride. Okay, Julie, you're playing for a trip for two to the St. James's Club and Villas in Ooh. Antigua. Seven days, six nights in a royal suite. It's all inclusive. It's a prize valued at $8,200. You have 20 seconds and only one guest. Good luck. All right, Julie, here we go. Okay. We've had Juliet Lewis on the show. In what sport did Juliet say she won third place when she was nine years old? Barrel racing. Yes! yes! Congratulations. You and a guest will enjoy seven days and six nights at the St. James's Club Antigua. Renowned as Antigua's most famous address, St. James's Club is the ultimate Caribbean hideaway. Enjoy all-inclusive dining and drinks, two white sand beaches, an indulgent spa, and more as you explore the palm-fringed shores of a stunning 100-acre peninsula. Your prize is valued at approximately $8,200. Julie, congratulations. That looks like a great oh. trip. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so, so much. All that right. is just such a blessing. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Oh, we're so happy you, you won. And you don't need that stinking mug or T-shirt. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to enjoy Antigua anyway. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. Now you get to make the day of a lucky member of our studio audience who will receive a Roomba vacuum cleaner from iRobot. So please pick a number between 1 and 179. 72. 72. Casual David Muir with these beautiful, like little, not little, but hiking boots, <laughs> just scuffed so perfectly. Oh, yeah? I yeah. like those a lot. I would say that's from doing actual yard work, yard ground work. Worker. Do you take those on the road with you, or are those your these, shoes? These go on the road now. They definitely yeah. go on the road, yeah. Um, I just figured, you know, I had every intention of putting on a suit for you guys, yeah. but I figured this is what I wear to work every day, you yeah. know, jeans Might from the waist well. down. You're not going to hide a lot from that behind that's that right. angle. Yes, you know? right. great. So, let's get into the news. I wanted yeah. to... Uh, uh, start with, can you give us the latest developments on the assassination attempt of yeah. former President Trump? First of all, can, can you believe in our country we're talking about this? No, it's disgusting. Not, yeah. again, it is. Yeah. again. It is absolutely uh, horrific. Uh, what we know, ABC News is actually just reporting a couple of minutes ago that um, we know that the former president was on the fifth hole of the golf course, um, but now we know that Secret Service agents uh, said in that moment, gun. Then everyone surrounded uh, the former president, his detail, uh -huh. uh, took him to a predetermined secure location, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's where they were able to head into the bushes, find what they discovered, and then they found the suspect a short time later. So he's under arrest. Obviously, the former president is safe. Um, and it, I don't need to say this. We all know this. Everybody in this crowd knows this here this morning. We have to condemn political violence, all oh violence in this country, yes. but political yes. violence. Um, And my hope, you know, we only have a few weeks until the election. We have to keep the former president. We have to keep the current vice president. We have to keep both of them safe, get to election day. And, and I just hope we get back to a time in this country where the temperature comes down, where whether you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, we all have them in our family. We That's love right. them all, all yes. of the points that they make. But that we just bring the temperature down in America and that we respect one another. And I think we need to the presidential debate last week and more than 70 million people tuned mm. in for that. Yeah. That is massive. Now, uh, a 
lot of, I, I mean, I really, I can't believe we got you here. I really appreciate it. I, I, I'm we sure think you've been asked to do a lot of interviews. A lot of interviews. I said only Kelly and Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, honestly. I, I will say this about the debate. You guys know me more, better than anyone. You know, I, I basically disappeared for the end of the summer because of the weight, the weight of this debate. You, yes. you take it seriously, Lindsay and I, and this extraordinary small team we have mm -hmm. at ABC. And we spent a lot of time, and um, I believe it was our duty to ask the issues that, that Americans care about. You know, the economy. Are we better off than we were four mm -hmm. years ago? Immigration. What are you going to do about the border? Why did you wait so long before you act on the border? Those, those types of questions. Mm -hmm. Reproductive rights. Afghanistan. Do you bear any responsibility? Uh, peaceful transfer of power with the next election coming. You know, these are all really important issues. The issues of our time, really. And I always say as a moderator, you know, what the candidates decide to do with that time, you can ask the questions, but they'll answer with whatever they choose to answer with. That's right. And you have to be ready for whatever might come your way, even the most unexpected of moments. <laughs> uh, as you all know, you know what I'm talking about. Right. And, and, and I will say this. All of the noise that you hear afterward about, you know, which candidate won the debate, did the moderators win or lose, that's just noise. Yeah. You all know that. The most important thing to remember is that you all have the power. Everybody at home yes. has the power to vote. I know um, you, you referenced it before that you sort of went, uh, you disappeared into the work uh, leading up to this debate. How long did it take you to recover sort of physically, emotionally yeah. after? Have you recovered This yet? is recovery. This, right is here. Re <laughs> this is recovery. You know, one of the things, thank you, thank you. you know, I'm not even joking here. <laughs> right before we started the debate, uh, Esther, who's my extraordinary producer, you yes. both have met Esther behind the wall. You know, the room, by the way, was small. I was going to ask you Nobody about the room. Nobody in the room, room the no audience. Right. Um, uh, the National Constitution Center, the stakes obviously enormous, and it was just the four of us. The two candidates walk out, they're within six feet of one another. Mm -hmm. And once that debate gets off and rolling, it's just the four of us in that room, the crew, and, and you know, God bless the crew, they did an amazing job that night. And right behind the wall, uh, Esther. So right before we start the debate, I just said, oh, I need my bag back. I had to make sure I turned off my cell phones so that Kelly would not text me. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just you four, Esther, and 70 million people. And 70 million people. All right, we, we take a break. We return, we'll discuss an anniversary that David recently celebrated. Stick around. You don't break. It's like, um, it's, I was with the two of you the weekend. I know. Yes, the, but listen, um, anybody that knows you, you are destined to be behind the desk. And, and evidence of that is this photo we have here. How old oh, were you there, David? I was 13 years old. Okay. That's, that's my dad. You didn't know my dad was Magnum P.I. I was going to say Lee Majors. Yeah. Your dad, you know, every so time I handsome. see him, your, your dad is such a babe. And he's a good and guy. And every yeah. time I see a photo of him, I'm always like, Oh my God, he looks like Steve McQueen. Oh my God, he looks like Lee Majors. Oh my God, it's, he yeah, always. Yeah, Tom Selleck. This is why he's yes. like. This is why he carries around his Kelly and Mark money. <laughs> <laughs> So you were, you were into it at a very, very yeah. young age. You were working at a TV station? I mean, I was a total nerd, yeah. In the backyard, everybody's playing. And I'd be out there, too, but then I'd be like, i got to go inside. It's time for the news. They're like, <laughs> so I'd go in and watch the news. I started visiting the station at 13 uh, years old, started interning at 14. Wow. And you know what? I just, obviously, my dad and my mom would take me in, so I'm grateful to them. And, I, and I'm grateful to everybody in that newsroom because yeah. this is what we all have to remember. It was just a kid with a dream, and they yeah. let me show up. And even when the news director, there was a new news director, I got in well, there was no boss. That's the right. only reason a kid that age could get in. They convinced the new boss to, to let me keep coming. And so, you know, I, I'm grateful to them. And I always try to remember that, you know, when people write to us or reach out to us that, you know. What's the one uh, thing you remember from that first broadcast when you took over? Uh, as after the, Diane? The, uh, after Diane. I remember a couple of things. First of all, your heart beats louder than the words coming out of your mouth mm. on that first night. Do you know what mm. I mean? You don't even really hear what you're saying. And I wanted to find a way to thank Diane right off the top, but not dwell on it. Mm -hmm. And I know that's what she would want to. Like, yeah, just right. get to the news. Do you get know what I mean? You've news. earned this moment. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I'll never forget the first phone call when I, when I got the job. Um, you know, the, the phone rang, and I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, but uh, Diane and the late, wonderful Mike Nichols, yeah. they were both on the line. And she said, this is Diane. And he goes, and this is Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they said you've earned this, and that yeah. meant the world to me. You, you sure definitely have. sure have earned it. So great to see you, man. Tune in tonight and every weeknight for ABC's World News Tonight with David Moore. Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> this guy. You know, uh, I gotta tell you, Wilmer, there is so much, uh, apparently, that we don't know about you. Your origin story. Um, take us back to uh, your family mm -hmm. and, uh, and fleeing Venezuela in the 90s. Tell us what that was like. Well, you know, I, I was, uh, I had, my, my mother and my father fell in love in Miami and uh, had my sister and me in Miami. And uh, first of all, hello, how are you guys doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and sorry, I, I, you know, M Mark left me a, a voicemail um, after he read the book and he made me quite emotional. I just want to know that that was so kind of you to do. And oh. it, at a time where you're telling your story, it's very vulnerable, you know, so. Well, I, I meant just it. Thank you, but thank you very I much. It. But yeah, so. It is terrifying, but it's also like a really uh, wondrous, you know, process. I was, as I was reliving these memories and thinking of like that, what, where did I go right? What were the things that that happened and, and how how I got here? And reliving those those days, understanding where I was coming from, going back to Venezuela. You know, we lived in a country who, in the early 80s, you know, was, uh, you know, the Bolivar and the dollar were almost one in one, right? It was mm -hmm. the third largest producer of oil in the world and uh, and the number one reserve and. Uh, you would think that it would be Dubai by now, you know? And um, over the years, you know, during the 90s, uh, a young general by the name of Hugo Chavez tried to take, you know, power by force mm -hmm. in Venezuela with a coup. My dad saw that as, a, that, that as, a, as the early signs of destabilization. And uh, we, he thought, this is not gonna go well. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, we decided we had to sell everything we had and come, come back, back to the Such an unorthodox yeah. immigration story because you started in America, left for 10 years, yeah. and came back. Um, what did you find most challenging, you and your family, when you came back? I think uh, first and foremost, you know, at 13, 14 years old, you think you're ready to figure it out. You're like, oh, I think I'm, uh, I'm already the cool guy, you know? And then you come out here and it's like, everything tells you you're not, not the, the cool, cool guy. guy. <laughs> language, <laughs> language, language was a big thing, and, yes. And, uh, and yeah, and language was, was the big one. To be able to learn how to speak English was terrifying. Well, it's probably one of the scariest experiences, I think, to today of my life. It wasn't learning how to speak English, you know? You think about the you know, the purity of just like going to the restroom in a public place and having to bump into somebody or or going to a, a gas station and asking for, you know, $10 and pump, whatever. Like all these little daily tasks that we take for granted because we're just flowing through life tends to be some of the most terrifying, terrifying. moments for us. You just kind of want to disappear, you just kind of want to You just want to blend in, you don't want yeah, to be acknowledged. You know, if anybody who looked like they didn't speak Spanish, you kind of just, <laughs> right. you hide under a, a table. I love you know? how, listen, I love I, I love this book. You talk, I mean, the, the, you talk about your trajectory as an actor, and then during this one moment, you're kind of look, searching for some meaning, and you found that service was like the way yeah. to that. Tell yeah. us about your work with US, the, the USO. Yes, thank you so much for asking for that because uh, this book was not supposed to be a biography or a memoir. I mean, I, I had this idea of creating a book for service. Um, I had traveled for the last 20 years, I've been traveling with the USO and I've been to every war zone you can think of, every... Mm. Um, Rồi đó, cái con, cái con này nó qua tới rồi đó. Okay, rồi chạy 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 chạy. Một. Hai, ba. Rồi chạy 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 chạy. Rồi rồi đánh nó nha. Một, hai, ba. Rồi chạy 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 chạy. Ơ chạy không nổi, chạy không nổi thôi, chạy không nổi thôi dây thở cái đợi xíu để mình thở cái bốn mươi bốn hai bốn 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 năm bốn sáu bốn bảy bốn tám bốn chín năm mươi rồi ok như đầy đủ rồi <cười> chém ba cái chạy nha một hai ê gọi nữa rồi đó rồi dẹp luôn đi trời ơi Chán nè Trở về nhận nhiệm vụ đó nè Bên đây toàn là nhân vật phản diện không
่าได้ไงดีเอเดมูทิงดีอย่าเจอเลิ้งนะมูทิมดิก็เงียวที่เงียวลุงเงื่อนไงเหลือไม่ดูฮะจอ๋อยเล่นได้นะจุ๋ยหลงก็น้อยก็ยืมมุ้งดูจ้ะเอ๋น่าจะอ้งหมดไก่ฮะโอเคดีเฮ้ยจ่ายครับแบบเฮ้ยจ่ายจ่ายจ่ายจ่ายจ่ายจ่ายตัวเลยตัวเขาก็แยกเด้อมันแต่น้ำมันนู้นจะเจ็ด